Let's do this thing. Oh, dude, that's so tough. Damn, I would be so. Hey, fucking... shout out Visit Talk, bro. I actually play with his ass. Cool. Just kind of looking back, you know, you've been here pretty much since the beginning. Um, you were now out of all the rotating players we've had, the last OG player still on the roster. For you, is that pressure or like reassurance that you belong on the team? Obviously, there's a little bit of pressure to perform. Um, but I would say it's more of reassurance that I'm I'm meant to be here. You know, I I try to put in the most work I can. You know, I try to motivate my team to get on to practice. Um, and you know, I, I want to get better, and we're getting better. And you know, I'm gonna improve however I can improve. Hey guys, I'm Ted, and I'm 20 years old, and I'm a second sub for Stella Gaming. Um, in my previous times, I, I'm only been in like one series org, you could say. But I think Stella Gaming provides a lot for their players. I think they actually care. Unlike, you know, some org owners just let the players do whatever and there's like no communication. And I think in Stella, we have a pretty good relationship um, between the players and the org owners. Like we're really good friends. Uh, we're always on Discord, like having fun, like playing with each other. So I think it's really cool that we have like a really vibey relationship with the org. So that's like what I like about Stella. Having a set schedule and being more um, toned into like what we expect between players and coaches and so on and so forth. So I'd say it's just uh, uh, more of uh, being a little more strict and like prioritizing and having players listen and be more um, adjective to it. Then that's probably the best thing. So yeah, so when we last left off, um, we were halfway through the LOG season. Um, we were still having issues kind of going through fourths. Um, and that problem really persisted throughout the entire season. Heading into uh, week number three, we were scheduled to play. Uh, the original roster was Hi-Fi, um, but they rebranded as Final Strike. So we ended up playing Final Strike uh, first. Yeah, you want to go in with the winning mindset, but but when you're just rotating and rotating players, it's so hard to just focus on winning when you're trying to focus on getting fourth. Okay, literally nothing is making me more frustrated than not being able to podcast properly with how close this game is. Like, are you kidding me? 30 seconds left. What we going off with Rise? We'll try to cast the last few seconds here. But right now, Rise, team, only nine seconds left. Sees his teammates going down and we'll have to end up taking a few shots. We'll get him out of the point. Still trying to stay alive with the other teammates. Back in the hill, Rise, he has to be able to make a play and he will end up dropping. And nobody left to contest except it will be Kai, unfortunately. He will end up dropping. Side of my strike is Ted. Oh my goodness, Ted, Johnny combined for two. Vapolo immediately there for the trade into a 4v2 situation. Caught out in the back. Escape should get caught, but no, he's somehow still alive. Polo, he's just running at him. Escape goes down into the 3v2 is Ted on the point. Grabs one. Make it two. Ted with the big plays on the bomb. He's waiting on this super, super late pinch, and Ted. All he needs to do is stay alive, and that's exactly what he is doing. Takes down Kai, seven seconds left, but his teammate watching over Stella. Nades, 
Utilities being tossed. Can't win the gunfight. And final strike. His teammates do find the trade in. Oh, barely into the point at the moment. Prox winning two major gunfights. As I don't think he's expecting this long flank coming in from Zeppo. The pinch was in. And now Rise hops on into the point. Game, set, match, Final Strike Academy. And right now, this is all Final Strike Academy as Polo just waiting for his teammates. Five kills in a row, but there Ted picks up two, make it three, as he needed to go massive, had a donut on the board. And that is a lot of time. They are rotating so early and winning these gunfights that the side of Final Strike can't get anything going. We're chalking up those last 20 seconds of hill time. We'll end up going down 10 seconds. Anybody going to be able to get there? It does not seem so. Jody ends up going down for three seconds left. And that is the series. Final strike. So, yeah, heading into the match versus final strike. Uh, you know, expectations were not high, not low. We were trying out a guy by the name of Escape, and you know, we gave him a fair shot. A lot of frustrations came from the fact that if we would have had a set fourth, we would have taken that W. You know, we were able to take the bulkage, um, but you know, it, it just it wasn't good. It, it just went downhill. Yeah, I think the most frustrating thing with that series was just the fact that we, we were just stagnant. We didn't do worse or better. It was just kind of more over the same. Um, so, you know, we gave Escape a shot. It, it didn't really work out, and he really just wasn't doing the objective work like Buddha. Um, so we ended up moving on. But anyways, heading into week number four, uh, you know, we were scheduled to play Chaotic and 410. Uh, this was a week in which we saw ourselves going one and one we knew for sure we could take the chaotic match um, And if we came out guns blazing, then we could for sure take 410, but uh, Unfortunately, that's not what happened So I reached out to the players over at chaotic and they told me they basically dropped out of the league and quite understandably They were already out of the playoff race at this point um, So we ended up just getting the forfeit 3-0 win again um, and so that put us in a really good spot in order to, you know, potentially make a run for the second best team in our, in our league. We weren't going to get it in terms of map score, but if we could pick it up towards the end, um, I felt like our chances at doing well at playoffs were a lot better. Well, the first time we put it in, they were shit. So I fucking, if we didn't win with boot, I would have been so mad. The chaotic was a good team, but we were just a better team and from the first time that we played them it was just going to go smoothly and either way the outcome was going to be the outcome our last match was against 410 which clearly was like the most stacked team on our on our pool how confident were you going into that series with me um honestly not confident at all i mean it's it's not like i was expecting to get smacked which we did Fuck, I did. We did have some crazy plays, especially the SD. I fucked some guy with the pistol, but other than that, like, I wasn't expecting no fucking dub or nothing. Yeah, it just kind of sucks that most players just don't really want to put in the time and they just want to team hop. You know, so unfortunately, we, we took a gamble and it, it just didn't pay off. So, with week number four concluded, we were heading over into week number five. So, it was the last week of the regular season. Um, we were going to be playing our rivals Zelix as well as a South American team um, that goes by Impact Gaming. Uh, and so, you know, the stage was set, just a quick 2-0 weekend and, and we should be fine. Oh, yep. Ben there it is. What's up, boy? You just got home? Yeah. <laughs> What's up with it, my boy? How's it going? Benny! I'll dap you up as well. Fuck it. If you uh, take a look at the table right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually wasn't talking about this table, though. 
What do you mean? I was, I was setting up the table behind oh, you right there. Shit. Yeah. Just pick any box or what? First box, right there. Okay. Okay. Oh shit, you got it all Okay. Alright. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it. Oh! Yeah, take, the, take a look at the rest of the box, though. Side though, you keep the sleeve. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get the little sponsors on there as well. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Come show the boys real quick. Let them peep. Let them peep. Quick. Oh shit, you got them done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh, then, shit, and then go bro. to the left. Go to show them this like. Hey. Oh, that's a fire. Come over here. Come over here. Woo. Open this first. Whichever one you want, buddy. I should put El Nino Brooks. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> El Nuevo Fichai de Stella. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new signing, new signing. New signing. We gotta do a press conference, that's uh, what we need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you know what's gonna be a dick move? What? The fact that we don't need the monitor anymore. You're a fucking dick. What's up, shit? He's wild, bro. You don't like when people hit each other. Well, look down real quick. I literally put on any shirt because I knew I was going to change into this shit the minute I got here. Oh, dude. Oh, a little throwback, bro. No shot. I still have the first one. One more, one more. This one's clean, bro. Still a gaming. Yes, established sir. in 2018. Hey, I graduated that year. Shout out to my 2018, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. That's crazy. Bro, you know what's crazy? This kind of looks like my Manchester United jersey I got for soccer. <laughs> is blue? Or Man City, Man City. Oh, okay, I was yeah. like, what is blue? Nah, Man City United is red. Oh, 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 oh my gosh, so many gifts. I like gifts. And I like up. Pay cut. All right, bro. Shit. Oh my god. What you think? Bro, it's fire shit. Oh my god. Hey, on some real shit, me and Ma Mafia and Stella have literally the best versions. I said it here. Their, theirs is pretty clean. I'm not even going That's why I said theirs yeah. is like a... Uh, clean. Yeah, that's fire. You know, everything has been at work since January. Uh, from the concepts to the website. Uh, all of it has been kind of cultivating for the last three months to kind of give you guys the best Stella experience that we can give you. Um, we want you guys to be able to rep Stella uh, from your homes if you guys want to get a jersey with your name on it or a hoodie or whatever it is. Um, anything that you guys do to support us will only help further what we're doing over here. Um, I'm not a believer in taking anything away from the players, so anything you guys put into Stella is going directly to our staff. The org, it kind of felt like more or less for fun, kind of trying out, testing the waters, and then now that um, we we are where we are, it kind of feels like it's much more serious and it's turning into a business, as in we got to make decisions for the best of the team and not necessarily for someone's feelings. We have to make sure that we push this organization to be the best that it possibly can, and uh, more or less it's some decisions that help you push through that you know whether that's dropping a player that you 
you liked as a, a person but obviously couldn't contend, then that's like one of those situations where you have to get used to it. Oh no! It fell apart. It fell apart for him. Oh, oh shit! That's true. That's true. Oh, <laughs> yo! They do not want to lose this shit, bro. They're really in this bitch. Nice. Oh, he got picked from behind. Is that game? They gotta contest. Nah, yeah, that's game. That's game. Oh, dude, that's so tough. Damn, I would be so. Hey, shout out Visit Talk, bro. I actually play with his ass. I'm cool. Baby, <laughs> what's up? How are you? Good. good. Oh. Come in here, Bentley. It was busy. No, it so you, guys, you guys went to uh, Texas Red House, though, right? Yeah. How was that? It was good. Their sides suck. <laughs> I tried their fries. It was nothing. Their bread's good, though. Their bread is good. Yeah. Prox, Johnny, they're in the middle of the screen, but you're good. Uh, yeah, going into that Z Lakes match, we ended up picking up a kid by the name of Subgressive. This was a East Coast kid. Uh, so we obviously had very different time zones and it was uh, I don't want to say it was difficult for us to practice But it wasn't the ideal setup to begin with, you know, we, we felt good heading into the series um, We had a decent amount of reps uh, the day of going into the match And so, you know, we felt quite confident and that first map man. It just it was a it was a battle It so was probably one of the best force we picked up at that time so going into that um, Zelix match, we were feeling good. Ooh, wow, a great break coming on in from the side of Stella. Prox finds two. And oh, will be Visitox on that outside. 18 and 9. Unfortunately, will get caught on out. Number four. Subgressive. Is he gonna be ready for this gunfight against Manny? And Manny not able to find the kill and sub. Gonna be there for the bait and switch with Prox. And oh my goodness, Subgressive just holds the angle, wins the gunfight. Get something going, Ted. Will end up finding the kill. As Zelix having a tough time securing a lot of this time. Prox will be the only one on the point. He will end up dropping. Ted though, still looking for more. Gets one. Finds two. Will he find the third passion? Gives him a few little tags as he's gonna pick up the automaton and try to win these gunfights from range. As he will fully get stunned. But Johnny unfortunately gets a team nade. And Stella, once again, they are just winning a lot of this scrap time. Ted will find four in a row. The rotation is there, and it's going to be up to Prox. The only member there for the side of Stella at the moment at three members. They do not have the rotation, but the team equipment and utility usage is there. Um, what was running through my mind at first is, you know, I'm here. I'm the only one alive. Um, teammates are coming, but I have to make a move. I try to take as much time, and... I saw the opening, I saw the guy in the heady. And unfortunately, it will be Johnny who ends up dropping. And the side of Zelix. Oh my, oh my goodness, Brox goes go, massive. Go, go. Oh my right. goodness, he's looking right. for another. He's looking for another, but nice. Ted is there for the trade. So those right, two kills by Prox end up going right, massive. Me, and Nade really bouncing off the walls. Let's go, Ted Johnny. And Prox do it. Let's go, Johnny. Prox finds four in a row. Watch him in, watch him in. They only need three seconds in number one. It's going to be Johnny in position to potentially hold this map. Prox, to he has to get aggressive. He knows well, he's the last member on the point. Two seconds left. Hey, yo, these boys can fucking bleed, y'all. These boys can fucking bleed. It's all good. It's all good. All good, bro. That's some good fucking plays, bro. Let's just tighten up. We just got to tighten up a little bit. Popped a quick two-piece. Got on the heady, you know, helped my team, did what I can. I made call outs, I tried to get info, you know, and you know, I got that three piece and I was stoked, you know. We, when we go four down in that situation, when the game is super close and this is where like tension's high, I guess, um, you know, you look at the scoreboard and you just think that y you, we might lose this because they have the rotations and we're still down. We're, we're about to lose, but. I, I got my hopes so when Prox got that three piece to be honest, you know. If if he would have been like super hyped in that match, I would have been so gassed. I would have been like, yo, we're about we might win this. Passion. We'll find two. And 
now he's gonna be in the 1v2, but Ted, he's going hunting in the 1v1. Man, he does have the bomb. Is oh my goodness, just ring around the Rosian. Ted, oh my goodness, this route might have just been perfect. Ted, no! Oh no! All right, we gotta play slower because these kids are just flying, bro. And look at this, they are just slowly crouching, holding each other's ankles. No way they do this. No way they pull this off. As now they just fly. They fly on Innis. Team shots are everywhere. As unfortunately, it will be the 1v2. And Stella, they had the numbers on inside the hill. And now, once again, it's going to be number eight. Subgressive. Needing to find these kills. Oh, my goodness. Sub. They line on up for him as I believe Passion or Roman just runs right on into his bullets. And it almost finds a third. And now, oh my goodness, the kill feed's starting to light up purple. But fortunately, it will be Johnny ending that streak as Johnny ends up finding two. Now into a 12v8. Ted on the backside finds a big one. Roman ends up dropping. And Ted, Johnny combined for four. Looking for more. As the side of Ted ends up finding three. As he's looking for the fourth. Can he win this gunfight? Ted, one on one. It will be against Passion, and he does it once again. The lives were 11 in favor of Zelix are now dwindling. Visit time. Cooking up a grenade. Johnny wins one. Brock's the last one left. And Manny, he will put it down. And that is a stamp to the series. Oh, that fucking A was a chalk, bro. Well, we still went back for him, bro. It doesn't matter if it was a chalk. No, like, I, they, I, I, I had that. No, they didn't. They fucking we, bro they, you they, broke they, it. Yeah, I broke it. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Exactly, so it by myself. It doesn't matter if I say it's chopped or not. You broke it. it doesn't yeah, matter. and then the, no one was after them. No one was there after him. Then they held that shit. Oh, Ted, what was was, Ted was your main, bro. Trust there me. was three of you, bro. We can literally look at last. Look, look at that shit right now. There you got three of them. <clears throat> Uh, it was actually closer than I thought. I thought Zelix was going to be cracked because Visitox is in there and they beat uh, Sensor or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was actually pretty, pretty freaking close. And I'm actually happy that we didn't get smacked because uh, that would have made me mad, to be honest. Getting 3 0 is obviously not good, but also you have to keep in mind that we had no practice in that match and it's not like we got completely blown out besides the S&D as long as we're keeping up with these teams they're not getting like out slight completely all we gotta do is just work on fundamentals in, in COD and especially in scrims and VOD review and I feel like we could definitely compete with these teams so you know 3-0 loss uh, it wasn't ideal and especially for a team that I consider our rivals it, that one stung that one really stung um, but you know it is what it is we pick up the pieces and we move on so uh, we still had one more match in the season. Uh, we ended up finding out that top three qualifies regardless. Going into the last match, um, it was it was a sigh of relief knowing that we're in playoffs. Even though personally, I don't think we should have been in the fucking playoffs. Fucking going third in the group. I mean, but it was whatever is how the league was set up. So, you know, in typical competition, it will be the top two teams. We were not expecting to be in playoffs. We didn't deserve to be in playoffs whatsoever but we were and so heading into that last match it was more of let's just practice let's build on certain habits and let's make sure that we take a dub Momentum is all mindset, to be honest. And if if you have that mindset that oh we lost, like our momentum is gonna go down, then you're gonna lose. That's why momentum is big. You know, once you have the momentum in COD, you could do almost anything. You know, 
especially with your composure and the team as a whole. You know, say that once you clutch like a 1v2 and you start winning rounds a lot more, especially when you're down, I feel like you have a better chance of winning. Nice, good shit. Nice. Good. He's in time, he's in time. Weak, we get the weak time, we time. Let's go, Theodore, you fucking One was fucking two front glass and one without her. Nice. Behind you, behind you, hey. oh, it's fucking windows, your windows. They're both on him, gotta get out. One close up on you, close up on you. Out of week, out of week. Left and third, left and third, left and third. Come pick, come pick. I got one, I got one. Oh, good shit, 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 there's one, Ali, Ali, Ali. He went church. He went church. Uh, both in there, both in there, both in there. Yeah, look at Tucker. Just free him, just free him. I got B again. I got one, I got one. He's driving my time, driving time, driving time. Fine, fine, fine. One more, one more, one more. One more, one more. One more, one more. No! Uh, no, 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 Point dead. One more warehouse. No, no, top tower, top tower. Two time, two time, bro. I'm playing my life. Oh, fuck. Drugs, drugs. It's a big area test, really. Give me a second. Good try. Go, baby. Good shit. Good shit. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, good fucking play, boy. Uh, Tuscan is just not our fucking SD map. Especially not when we were playing with sub. I think the reason why we didn't close out that map is because we started getting a little bit too relaxed. You know, we look at the round count and, you know, we just think we're going to win. I think we just throw, like, the fundamentals out the window. We just start running at them and we're getting blooded a lot instead of, you know, sticking to what's on paper and closing out the series and then... You just got to play. Like, hearing stuff like, fuck, or he's one shot. Where the fuck didn't we kill him? Are you still there? Shit like that. It, it fucking brings you down, honestly. And especially if you're the one fucking getting shit on. Yo, you're just thinking that it's your fucking fault. But yeah, in that match, I don't even think I heard a single fucking complaint. It was, honestly, it was a crazy fucking comeback. Team Impact was a, a, a team that I was kind of keeping my eye on. Just because they kept their season alive all year long. Because they're a team from South America. They were not allowed to host any of their maps uh, against any of the teams. You know, I, I had mixed feelings about it. 
but regardless, we ended up losing three to two to impact a very winnable series. One of the ones that I think we just let it slip. So heading into the last match of the season, uh, the boys decided to get some practice by actually signing up for a qualifier for a different league. Uh, this league is called ESC, and um, yeah, you know, they played in the qualifier. I wasn't really expecting too much. I was like, hey, just get some solid practice and see what kind of teams you run into. Um, and we actually ended up qualifying, you know, so that was kind of like a little boost of confidence. Just qualifying for a league that we know they are going to have upper teams that are, you know, qualifying top 64, top 32 in challengers, you know, and we were beating teams like that. So, you know, there was a, there was definitely a lot of disappointment with how we finished, but the whole idea was okay let's see how let's see how we perform in playoffs if we can somehow make a run in playoffs i'll justify keeping the team that we have just for a little bit longer and so then we got the news uh ted basically hit us up and told us you know i have an exam i was definitely kind of annoyed at the league because we couldn't reschedule this match and i i can't skip my exam type of thing and i i i, I did feel kind of bad for for leaving the team last second because I just I never told him about my exam thing and I thought we could reschedule the league matches so I guess that didn't really pan out well because we then had to start in losers bracket which is definitely not really good for the team as a like composure wise so yeah so oh, fuck you Ted um no but honestly um it was just stupid fucking timing um ted had to do something for school and we had uh no idea that the lead match was that day so we honestly couldn't do anything we tried to pick up a sub they wouldn't let us so all we could do is forfeit and it was whatever it was honestly my fault as the owner for not preparing my guys properly and so when I dropped the ball on this and I just didn't inform them ahead of time that it was going to be preset matches and that we weren't going to be able to schedule them, um, it just kind of set us up to fail. And so, you know, we were basically told, hey, you don't have another sub on your roster and your roster is locked in going into playoffs. So we couldn't pick up anybody else um, and there was nobody else to play. So we basically had to forfeit and start into losers bracket heading into esc i i had to make a tough decision you know do we continue to be the team that we are right now or do i take a risk and potentially make us better um you know and i'm i'm a i'm a risk taker i don't care what the odds are as long as i believe in the people that i'm working with i'm willing to take those odds so uh you know the decision to drop was subgrepsa was definitely mine it was 100% mine. I'm not going to put it behind the players. Um, I didn't see our roster growing to the potential that it needed to with him behind us. And so with that being said, I tried to work my magic. I looked all over the place and I was able to find a local player by the name of Bobo. I kept hearing um, ideas that we wanted to sub out. But I didn't really think we were gonna do it right before the start of the the new league. It just felt like a like the Buddha situation all over again, where we dropped Buddha right before the league. And I just thought we were gonna repeat what the fuck we did with Flow G. I kind of always knew that Subgressa wasn't our long-term solution. I feel like um, his playstyle didn't match the way we wanted to play, and I feel like his playstyle is much more different. It came out to be a good thing, and we're moving forward from that. We're just going day to day improving and um, you know we had to move on from progressive he didn't like it but you know that's call of duty you know you got to do what you got to do to improve as a team and improve your roster you know I just, I be cool, dude, I'm telling you, I spent so much money on coffee, bro. Yo, like, so coffee, that adds up, bro. I just blow through my bag on coffee. You spending your money on what? Coffee, bro. I drink it too often. Yeah, that's crazy. Working in the kitchen, all that's fucked up. 
Uh, also, he looked he looked he eagled. I mean, he he, he looked. Mm, yeah, well, I don't know if he had it, to, but if like, you would have told time, looked, if yeah, you would have told him to stay in the boat, then then he wouldn't have a reason to be watching his own alley. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, he doesn't even know you're watching. Like, he doesn't even know anyone's watching over him. He's just watching his own alley. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, right here. This whole round we all play dog shit, nah, especially, yeah, especially round, with me, bro. It's because we like we just came into this round like thinking we're like just gonna fucking, fucking not smoke them on it, but yeah, honestly, I I played this round so fucking bad, dude. I had two fucking kills and like ten deaths. <laughs> it was bad, bro. Let's do this. Two, two, one more, one. I'm gonna go hit check this round. I got him. I got one. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I appreciate it, boys. Good shit, boys. What the fuck? Let's fucking go, baby. Good shit, yo. We're fucking ready for that Berlin. The only thing that's screaming against the aggressive, I'm gonna be honest here, I knew that we were gonna win. He just formed a team and he was. He was just trying to scrim us out of spite, to be honest. And um, I just knew, like, my confidence going in that that scrim was like we we're gonna. I don't think we we're gonna drop a map map against these guys, but when we we're playing against them, I saw like a lot of potential in the team, especially Bo. You know, he he brings a lot more to the table. First of all, the scrims were great. Um, that series was great. We played our hearts out. Like we literally picked the guy up like hours before the league. And the fact that we smacked them, it, it really felt great. Um, yeah. Did it sort of validate at the time that we made the right decision in moving on from Subaggressive? Um. Yeah, picking up Bobo was was good. Um, did not expect Bobo to be as good as he was. So before. Playing with Bobo, I was just like, oh, here we go again. But I mean, Bobo, Bobo is definitely an upgrade. <laughs> so yeah, heading into that day, man, we were scheduled to play Eclipse. And uh, something that I wish hadn't happened ended up happening. Um, heading into the match, something that I realized was I want to track my players' advanced stats. Uh, when you whenever you play matches league matches and it gets to the scoreboard at the end of a match If you're not in Codcaster, you don't get those extra stats that it gives you you get way more advanced stats um, If you have a Codcaster and it, it gets captured, you know uh, So one of the things that I realized is hey this league is not gonna prioritize streaming and casting our matches let me do that myself so you know i requested the league i told them hey i'm gonna be in the same room as them but i am gonna be casting their match i will have my monitor turned away from them um and you know just trying to maintain as much uh competitive integrity as possible and one of their requirements was hey just keep your sound on we ended up streaming the whole match we ended up having an average of like nine to ten people tune in here and there and so then uh after the match you know they asked us for the vod i send it over no issue and you know next morning i wake up hey you have to forfeit the match i'm like we just won 3-0 what do you what do you mean we have to forfeit the match we beat them we we've 100 percent beat them i captured it they go um yeah but your vod doesn't have any audio and so i i go back i look at the vod and because I was playing copyrighted music in between matches, um, Twitch decided to just mute my whole VOD. And so, uh, you know, the other team got caught a wind of this, and I am pretty sure it was a decision that they made to request a replay. Um, so what ended up starting off as a really good start by the players um, ended up turning into a really complicated situation that didn't need to be complicated the fact that we were about to get forfeited was just fucking ridiculous the suggestion should have been to replay instead of forfeiting us and the fact that we had to get vouchers just to replay the fucking match was really fucking stupid honestly uh to deal with in the moment yes we're we were all super frustrated and super let down and i was i felt let down in myself because i took that away from them you know um i i probably felt the shittiest out of out of anybody 
Um, but I'm so glad that my team was so composed enough to say fuck it. You know, it hurts, but we're going to do this replay and we're going to come back and, you know, just we're, coming, we're coming back for that 3 home, you know what I'm saying? That's just going to be, where's the broom? All right. <laughs> we need this we need this frogs now with that being said the only teams that we would have to worry about for this week would be la violence and underrated um we had no prior knowledge to either of these teams we didn't know how they operated how they played um so we kind of just had to trust uh the things that we were working on and see how they stacked up a little dicey here bobo Bobo down, Ted got one, Ted is in hill, Ted got two! Crasher got one, there's only one more left. Prox has got a big gunfight right now. Let's go look at little Prox, what he's doing, what he's gonna do with it. One on time, will you read this? Oh, nice timing! Here we go, 35 seconds guys, let's see how they're gonna break this. Geo through the back, he is in closet, he's gonna hit me. Big gunfight right here, he's got hits. Come on, will this happen? What is going on? Oh my! Prox went up! Or will Stella just finish this off? Stella is on time. It's 248, 195. Ember is roaming around you. He catches Bobo. Bobo is dead. They're playing around time. Prox on the outer tank. He catches one. How is Prox going to play this? Will he get time or will he go around? Oh my! Stella just enough time on Hill. Very good job. How is Prox and Bobo going to play this? 23 seconds on the bomb, 22 and counting. Bobo's just gonna hop on. Bobo gets caught. Prox is the last alive, and he gets chopped down by Joey. And Ted gets caught by Ember. Bobo catches. He catches the fade too. Ember's got two on his name. Prox does have one. Oh, he gets chopped down. It's a 2v2. Bobo against Johnny. <coughs> oh, Bobo Johnny against Ember and Coven. Bomb is gonna go down. Johnny picks up one. Johnny picks up two. This is gonna go to around 11. What the fuck did I just watch? They have 32 seconds. Number six and number eight. These are big kills right here. Well, they catch this. They catch one. Ted catches another. And that's it. LA won those gunnies. Prox gets one. Prox gets two. Saves it. What did Prox just do? He just saved that for Stella. Prox gets another. Will he get that four? He gets the ace. Prox with an ace. He's on a four. He's on a five streak, actually. Wow. Prox just fucking held that down. But he gets taken down. It doesn't even matter. LA violence. What an amazing match towards the end. Trying to read this match. Prox hopes that they don't. But Prox really just does that little bunny hop and fucks him up. Geo, what a nade from Geo. LA is set up for P2. They catch one early on. That catches that. Ah, uh, LA catches it. Joey in the front. Got him weak, but he gets traded. Pitch perfect after this. Oh no, the whole team of LA is just on time. And I don't think there's anyone going to be able to stop that time right now. That is going to be a win for LA. So that first match ended up being against LA Violence. Uh, yeah, it, it, we had a really good start to that match. And somewhere in map number two, our flame just sort of went out. And as much as we try to recover in map number three for control, it just it didn't happen. Um, and it just it ended up steamrolling. One one round at a time, we bring it back to a 5-5. To a five five, um, but just weren't able to close it out. The overall series after the S&D was horrible. If we won the S&D, we definitely would've won the whole thing. It's just unfortunate that we started out very slow in the S&D. And the fact that we almost brought it back should've been enough for us to go into the control with um, like the winning mentality, but it just wasn't the way we wanted it to go, so. Why do you think it's so stressful to compete? Um, It's stressful because the fact that you're struggling against shitters, and then you just think about, all right, bro, am I actually gonna make pro if I can't even beat these fucking guys over here? Like, that shit's just, it gets to you, and then you just start fucking thinking about if you actually wanna stick to it or fucking just focus on something else. Yeah, I was I was really disappointed with how 
we didn't close that series. I think that it was one of those teams that we could have definitely beat. Um, but I also understood that our team is two days old. So, you know, the fact that we're stacking up against these rosters this early on um, was just a sign of, uh, of more success to come, you know. So right after that match, uh, we ended up having to play underrated. We didn't really have any time to sort of strategize or talk about the previous mistakes that we had already done. Um, so the main thing that I told my guys is, hey, you guys just made those mistakes right now. You guys know exactly what you did wrong. So just make sure you don't do it again. I'm on new. I need help. I need help. I need help. Yeah, I got one. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. One more. One more. Yeah, one more. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. I stay on head pitching this. I'm hard blocking. I'm hard blocking. Hard blocking. One more dead front. I'm hard blocking. Oh, nice. I'm hard blocking. I'm hard blocking. Okay. I'm hard blocking. Let's yeah, fucking go. Fucking shit, dog. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Everyone's middle. Middle, middle, middle. Oh, you're better. Oh, nice. yeah. Our bomb's been taken yeah. out by the enemy. Right, regroup. We'll get them next time. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Enemies planted the bomb with ice. Fuck you, Ted. Fucking go, Ted. Yo, let's not wait till we go down 0-2 to come with the intensity, y'all. What's up? What's up, boss? We're starting off flat because we don't have any breakoff strats, personally. That's just to me. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So, even though we were down a lot, I, I was still confident we could still bring this back. And especially when you come in the room and I could hear you, like, gassing us up when we'd make a good play. That just, like, makes me kind of hype and makes me want to, like, you know, yo, we got this, you know? And having that, like, that momentum in COD is very important to me. So, I feel like, um... It's just our breakoff strats, to be honest. I think we could, I feel like we could definitely get more points in the beginning instead of like rotating early because we, we just never know how to play right in the beginning. So, you know, they're quiet, they're not talking. And so uh, I I had to kind of go back to some old strategies from, from soccer that some coaches would give me, you know, when I wasn't trying to listen, they would give me a harder time. And, you know, sometimes you just got to get players out of their own way. You know, they were standing in their own way. And it was clear that if they just played the game the right way, it was going to be ours. I'm hopping, I'm hopping. Defusing the bomb now. I think I need to grasp right there. Watch my U, watch my U, watch my U. Let's fucking go. Yeah, he's still tree, he's still tree, he's still tree. He's still tree. Pushing our side. No, no, he's just laying down. You're good. Calling man. Oh my god, I shoot on the kid fire. Outer, outer. Got him. One, one outer, outer room. Outer room with the sword. Yeah, fire's clear. Fire's clear. I see outer room, bro. Three, three, three. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Fucking go. Let's go, baby. Baby. Hey, good shit, bro. Hey, good fucking way to regain, boys. Come on, bro. We control the hard there. Arena kick them. Arena? Oh, they're playing on lamb. Well, that's like, that. You know how, like, you can play at lamb centers? The fact that we came back on Berlin, the fact that we came back in the S&D certainly boosted us. Um, regardless if they got kicked or not, we would have won the boat cage, but it actually, it actually fucking sucks that they got kicked. Uh, it doesn't feel good to win that way. And I personally hit up the guy and I told him my bad because I, I had no idea. We scheduled the match so fucking late and I had no idea they were going to get kicked or anything. So I did feel bad, but the score wouldn't ever wouldn't wouldn't have changed, honestly. So yeah, with that, uh, we ended up closing out a pretty convincing 3-1 series. Uh, you know, one and one is is a lot better than being 0 and two, and so it's not our worst start. 
uh, we definitely have to be better for the upcoming weeks um, and it's not something that is gonna take a day you know but uh, ideally with a fourth that will be willing to build with us um, a lot of these tendencies and mistakes we can start to uh, sort of start picking at and hopefully you know just getting out of all these bad habits that we have um, I would say that would be my main motivation going into the season. We, we turned up in those simple moments and you know we made shit happen and we took the dub. Next week is going to be a lot better um, especially knowing that our my schedule is fixed so that means more practice that means more time into improving that means more time into vibes that means more kids are getting smacked um, so you know that one and one doesn't really show anything, you know. We're O and O, and we're just gonna keep bumping that shit up. What's what's your state of mind? Got some food in your belly. Got a little dub. I feel like I deserve this fucking panda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you my for performance. Sure you do. Flip it. Hey, Flip I'm, it. I'm walling, bro. That ass. Flip it. Yeah, shit. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Dude, when Flip I it. got that kill, I got so Flip hard, it. bro. <laughs> <laughs> So, y'all gonna be here bright and early to do y'all's interviews, right? Oh, shit. Uh, right? You gotta Johnny? Send me, send me the questions, though, because I got... I got your right. questions, I'm bro. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. Price, I got hella questions for you, so <laughs> you better be ready on this one. You you finna be... You finna be the most featured. Okay. Uh, uh, Prox. Oh, yeah. And bring your fucking jersey, too. It's tiny. It's tiny. At least the hoodie hey, or something. Uh, At least the, the Stella uh, hoodie, bruh. I, I, I will wear that shit, bruh. Stella. Stella. Hey, we got the extension, the extension, and we got him a two-year contract. <laughs> two-year contract, <laughs> Max. We're not just an or just competing. We're also making really good content. And shout out to all those the one-shot people, bro. You know, it's really cool how you guys are invested in this. And I, and I hope that you continue working with us. You know, these LAN parties at the crib, they, they become sort of like a thing, you know. Um, I'm hoping as, as time goes on and we discover more orgs from the Bay, we can invite other uh, teams whenever we do play them. Um, I know we have a match against Zelix at some point, so hopefully they can come by. Uh, heading into this new season, I, I knew I wanted to compete for a top four, top six position. Um, anything less is just clearly a failure and, and a step down, and so... Uh, I knew that we definitely needed a second, uh, a second opinion, uh, a Call of Duty mind that's gonna look at things objectively, um, and so that's when I knew we needed a coach.